Hi, today we are going to discuss about operational amplifier. Operational amplifier is an electronic device uh, which is widely used in linear electronic devices. This operational amplifier is very popular in linear electronic devices owing to its uh, properties. So what are these operational amplifier, what are its properties and how it can be used for different applications that we are going to see in this particular chapter. So let's look at what is this operational amplifier is. If I have an operational amplifier then there are two input terminals and one output terminal. These input terminals are known as inverting and non-inverting terminal. Why they are called as non-inverting and non-inverting terminal? We will be discussing that in a while but before proceeding further uh, in order to understand the properties of this amplifier, let's discuss about how it is constructed. It is not a single device. It is made up of different electronic components. The block diagram of this operational amplifier looks something like this. There are basically four electronic components. There are two differential amplifiers, one emitter follower and a level shifter electronic circuit. Now, the first differential amplifier used in double-ended output mode. So as you know in differential amplifier there are two terminals and this differential amplifier it amplifies the difference between the input terminal so one of this terminal i'm going to call it as non-inverting and another terminal is inverting terminal so if i apply some voltage v1 over here and some voltage v2 over here this will amplify the difference between v1 and v2 so it will amplify v2 v1 minus v2 and it is double ended so i am going to use both the output terminals of this device and it is fed to the next differential amplifier the second differential amplifier however is used as single ended output and the output of this device is fed to emitter follower and the output of emitter follower is fed to a level shifter and after that you get the actual output of a device this whole thing comprises what is known as operational amplifier now let's understand the working of this individual component so that we can understand the properties of operational amplifier in a better fashion as we know the differential amplifier the property of differential amplifier is that it has high input impedance it has high cmrr so what is cmrr it is called as common mode rejection ratio so basically if you fit the same signal to non inverting and inverting terminal then those will that will not be amplified since it has high uh, impedance high cmrr and a substantial gain because of that first differential amplifier will reduce the noise noise will be fed both to the inverting and non inverting terminal and that will be uh, that will not be amplified and that will be taken care of this is also reduces effect due to temperature change and supply voltage fluctuation the second differential amplifier is used to enhance the gain of the amplification so basically if i have a single amplifier something like this if i have an amplifier with a gain a1 and if i fed this input to the another amplifier with having a gain a2 so basically what is gain gain is nothing but output divided by input so suppose if this gain is 10 and this gain is 20 now if i have a gain of 10 then if i fade one volt of input then the output voltage will be equal to 10 volt so it has been increased by 10 times now suppose in this cascaded mode what i am going to do the first amplifier has a gain of 10 and let's say suppose second amplifier will also have a gain of 10 and if i fading up let's say one millivolt of voltage what is going to happen to this particular thing so when one milli uh, millivolt is fed to first amplifier the output voltage at the end of the first amplifier will be 10 millivolt since the gain is 10 and this 10 millivolt is fed to the second amplifier and hence the output of the second amplifier will be equal to 100 millivolt so if i look carefully at this particular thing the compound gain of this amplifier will be equal to gain of amplifier 1 into gain of amplifier 2 which is equal to 100. Similarly, for this particular case, if this amplifier has a gain of 10 and this amplifier has a gain of 10, combinedly they will have a gain of 200. So as you can see, even if gain is substantially large, it can be increased more substantially by using a second stage of differential amplifier. So it enhances the gain. Moreover, 
it also enhances common mode rejection ratio suppose i have applied one hold a uh, one millivolt over here and one millivolt over here since it has a high common mode rejection ratio this one millivolt and one millivolt that will not be amplified rather it will be reduced so at the end what i'm going to have i'm going to have a very small amount of voltages let me say that 0.1 micro volt and further when i'm fed it to the second differential amplifier at the output i'm going to have it is again reduced let's say one nanovolt which cannot be even detected so the second phase is used mainly to enhance the gain of the amplifier and to enhance the common mode rejection ratio okay. so why first uh, differential amplifier is used the first differential amplifier is, is used to reduce the noise so basically enhance cmr second thing is reduce the effect due to temperature change and to reduce the voltage block creation so basically it has a good gain but it's not used to enhance the gain so whatever gain it has that will be enhanced after the second stage so over here mainly the first amplifier is used to have reduction in noises the second amplifier is used to enhance the gain and to enhance the common mode rejection ratio the emitter follower basically is an amplifier having a gain of one so the gain of this particular amplifier is equal to one but it has low output impedance so the output impedance of this particular device is low differential amplifier as we discussed it has a high input impedance and this emitter follower has a low output impedance and it isolates two different stages so basically what is going to happen over here is that because of this emitter follower this device will have a low output impedance and the last stage is level shifter so what happens is that since the gain is very very large even if i say that i applied a zero volt over here and instead of getting output is equal to zero when v in is equal to zero i'm going to get some non-zero value of output voltage in order to move this particular output voltage to zero this level shifter is used so basically what level shifter does when the input voltages are zero it makes sure that the output voltage is also zero these are all complex electronic circuits and the combination of this all electronic circuit is known as operational amplifier now it's very difficult to show such a block diagram in each electronic circuit that's why we are going to use a symbol for operational amplifier and the symbol for operational amplifier which is commonly called as op amp is something like this so i have two terminals one terminal is now called as non inverting terminal another inver terminal is called as inverting terminal so the plus sign terminal is called as non inverting terminal and the minus sign terminal is called as inverting terminal i have two input terminals and i have one output terminal so this is output terminal now why this negative terminal is called as inverting terminal and why it is called as non inverting terminal this is because if you apply a positive voltage if you apply it to inverting terminal then the polarity of this particular voltage will be changed at output so you will get a negative output voltage and if you apply a positive voltage to non inverting terminal then the polarity will remain same so if you apply a positive voltage to non inverting terminal it will remain positive and if you apply positive voltage to inverting terminal it will be negative at the output so basically this is input voltage and this is output voltage polarity of input and output voltages since the polarity of voltage applied to this particular terminal changes it inverts it that's why it is called as inverting terminal and since the polarity of the voltage does not change that's why it is known as non inverting terminal okay the, uh, you might also see a symbol similar to this so basically you have this non inverting and inverting terminal and this is a output terminal and additionally you will have something like this plus vcc or plus v and minus vcc so this plus vcc and minus vcc are known as supply voltage in order to operate this particular device you need to provide some amount of voltages for these devices so as you have seen there are 
four different stages so in order to function those four different stages you need to have supply voltage so any one of this diagram can be used generally people use this particular diagram to show the operational amplifier so let me quickly just speak about this inverting and non-inverting terminal uh, to clarify it so suppose i have this particular amplifier this is inverting terminal and if i apply some signal like this at the inverting terminal what will be my output so my output will be exactly inverted so whenever at the input there is a positive going cycle something like this positive going cycle i'm going to get a negative going cycle at the output and whenever there is a negative going cycle at the input i'm going to get a positive going cycle at the output obviously the strength of the signal will be enhanced because it is an amplifier and if i apply the signal to non inverting terminal and if the applied signal is something like this then the output will be say similar so basically whenever i, ha I have a positive going cycle at the non inverting terminal the output will be positive going cycle and whenever i have a negative going cycle at the non inverting terminal the output will be non inverting so if i'm talking in terms of fixed voltages say a positive voltage at the input applied to a inverting terminal the output voltage will be negative so the polarity of the voltage will be changed so if i apply let's say positive voltage over here it will be negative and if i apply negative voltage over at the input i'm going to get a positive voltage that's why it is called as inverting because it inverts the signal and at the non inverting if i have apply a positive voltage at the non inverting terminal the at the output i am again going to get a positive voltage so it does not invert the polarity of the input signal